Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are around the globe. My name is Christina Leano. I serve as Associate Director for the Global Catholic Climate Movement. And on behalf of the Ecumenical Steering Committee for the Season of Creation, I am delighted to welcome you to our Ecumenical Prayer Service to close this year's season. For the past five weeks, Christians around the globe have marked the season through thousands of events, from tree plantings in Nairobi, to prayer services in Rome, online youth climate actions, and educational webinars exploring this year's theme of Jubilee and its implications in healing our planet amidst the COVID pandemic. So it is most fitting that we gather today at the season's close with leaders across the Christian ecumenical family to give thanks for all of this good work and to offer up the fruits of these efforts to our creator. Just to note that there will be an opportunity for all of you to offer your prayers. So we invite you at that time to put them in the chat box. So as we enter into this time of prayer, let us take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts and minds and take a breath together, recognizing our common dependence on the earth and each other. So may this prayer service deepen our bonds as a Christian family and global community, and may it strengthen our resolve to continue caring for our common home. So in the name of the triune God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of the earth and all its creatures, Praise be to you, Holy Trinity. God is sound and life, creator of the universe, source of all life, whom the angels sing, wondrous light of all mysteries, known or unknown to humankind, and life that lives in all. We gather in the image of the creator. We gather in the name of the redeemer. Who reconciles all of creation. creation. We gather in the presence of the life giver. Who inspires new life and renews it. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo, oremos. Creador de vida, por tu palabra la tierra produjo plantas que dieron semillas y árboles de todo tipo que dieron frutos. Los ríos, las montañas, los minerales, los mares y los bosques sostuvieron la vida. Los ojos de todos te miraban para satisfacer las necesidades de cada ser vivo. Y a lo largo del tiempo, la tierra ha sostenido la vida. Con los ciclos planetarios de días y estaciones, renovación y crecimiento, abriste tu mano para dar a las criaturas el alimento en el momento adecuado. En tu sabiduría, concediste un sabato un tiempo bendito para descansar en gratitud por todo lo que has dado, un tiempo para liberarnos del consumo desenfrenado, un tiempo para permitir que la tierra y todas las criaturas descansen de la carga de la producción. Pero en estos días, nuestra vida está llevando al planeta más allá de sus límites. Nuestras demandas de crecimiento y nuestro interminable ciclo de producción y consumo están agotando nuestro mundo. Los bosques se agotan, la tierra se seca, los campos fallan, los desiertos avanzan, los mares se acidifican, las tormentas se intensifican, animales y seres humanos se enferman. 
no hemos permitido a la tierra guardar su sabbat y la tierra está luchando por renovarse. Durante este tiempo de la creación, te pedimos que nos concedas el valor de celebrar un sabbat para nuestro planeta. Fortalécenos con la fe para confiar en tu providencia. Inspira nuestra creatividad para compartir lo que se nos ha dado. Enséñanos a estar satisfechos con lo necesario. Y mientras proclamamos un jubileo para la tierra, envía tu Espíritu Santo para renovar la faz de la creación. Todo esto te lo pedimos en nombre de Aquel que vino a proclamar la buena nueva a toda la creación. Jesucristo, nuestra paz y nuestro bien. Amén. Amén. Most High, all powerful, good Lord, you are the prizes, the glory, the honor, and all blessing. To you alone, Most High, do they belong, and no person is worthy to mention your name. Be prized, my Lord, through all your creatures, especially through my Lord Brother Son, who brings the day and you give light through him, and he is beautiful and radiant in all his splendor. Of you, most high, he bears and precious and beautiful. Praise be you, my Lord, through brother wind and through the air, cloudy and serene, and every kind of weather through which you give sustenance to your creatures. Praise be you, my Lord, true sister water, which is very useful and humble and precious and chaste. Praise be you, my Lord, true brother fire, through whom you light the night, and he is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. Praise be you, my Lord, true sister mother. Perhaps. Praise be you, my Lord, true those who give pardon for your love and bear infirmity and tribulation. Bless all those who endure in peace, for by you, most high, they shall be crowned. Praise be you. Praise and bless my Lord, Praise, we praise, we praise you, God, for the earth that sustains life. Through the planetary cycles of days and season, renewal and growth, you open your hand and give all creatures our food in the proper time. In your wisdom, you gave a Sabbath for the land to rest, but we have not allowed the land to observe a Sabbath and the earth is struggling to renew. And so we confess God of mercy and justice. You tell us the land must rest free from the burden of production. 
our demand and the earth, the earth, earth produced produce beyond, beyond, its beyond its limits bondage and our bondage to desire, to desire more. more. You call us to pause from sowing, pruning, and reaping in ways that destroy the soil. We confess our, our vicious consumption of food of and food energy. And energy. You assure us that we can be filled from the yield of the land. We, we confess our lack, of our lack of trust that we can thrive within the earth's limits. You affirm that our security is found in enough. We confess, confess our, our lack, lack of courage, of courage to resist, resist the myth, myth of endless, of endless growth. growth. You tell us that the land must not be sold permanently because the land is yours and everything in it. We confess to thinking, to thinking of creation as, as given instead, instead of a gift. You call us to leave enough fruit on the vine and in the fields to feed our neighbors, animals, and replenish the earth. We confess, we confess our failures to share that we receive from the earth. You call us to fairness and justice. We confess, we confess our, our lack of faith. faith. Not loving you with our whole heart and strength. As ourselves, oh, how human as and non human neighbors, all as ourselves. Turn us from fear and mistrust and, and free, free us, us to, to imagine, imagine life, life reconciled, reconciled to the earth, the earth and, and, all and all creatures to the good, the good news, news of, of Jesus. Jesus Christ. In whose name we pray. We pray. The Spirit help us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sight too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. Amen. Let all creation sing for the Lord, and every nation of the earth rejoice. Let all the trees lift a shout of joy, for the Lord is King. Let the deep waters of the sea resound. Let every mountain, every hill sing out. Let all the fields make a joyful sound, for the Lord is King. Stormy weather, every canyon, every valley, sing a praise and give him glory. Nature proclaims the glory of our God. Nature proclaims his name. Let our creation sing before the Lord, and every nation of the earth rejoice. Shout of joy for the Lord is King. Let the deep waters of the sea resound. Let every mountain, every hill sing out. Let all the fields make a joyful sound. For the Lord is King. Every star and constellation, every wonder in the heavens, silver. 
the moon and supernova sing a shining hallelujah nature proclaims the glory of our god nature proclaims his name let all creation sing for the lord and every nation of the earth rejoice let all the trees let the shout Let us now read the word of God, Leviticus 25, 1 to 12. The Lord said to Moses at Mount Sinai, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land I am giving to give to you, the land itself must observe a Sabbath to the Lord. For six years sow your fields, and for six years prune your vineyards and gather their crops. But in the seventh year, the land is to have a year of Sabbath rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. Do not sow your fields or, your, or prune your vineyards. Do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the grapes of your untended vines. The land is to have a year of rest. Whatever the land yields during the Sabbath year you, will be food for you, for yourself your male and female servants, and the hard worker and temporary resident who live among you, as well as for your livestock and the wild animals in your land. Whatever the land produces may be eaten. Count off seven Sabbath years, seven times seven years, so that the seven Sabbath years amount to a period of 49 years. Then have the trumpet sounded everywhere on the 10th day of the seventh month. On the day of atonement should be the tr a trumpet throughout your land. Consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land and to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. Each of you is to return to your family, property, and to your own clan. The 50th year shall be a jubilee for you. Do not sow no, and do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the untended vines, for it is a jubilee and it is to be holy for you. Colossians 1, 
15 to 20. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 11, verse 25 to 30. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handled over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in health, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Any solemn celebration of creation should be grounded in sacramental reconciliation. That's the fundamental vocation of all Christians, believers, and people of goodwill. As we just heard in the readings, Jubilee is intimately and inseparably connected to reconciliation. So what is reconciliation? First, reconciliation means caring for creation. For 30 years now, His All Holiness Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew has discerned the signs of our times and persistently proclaimed the primacy of spiritual values in determining environmental ethics. That's precisely why religion has a key role to play. As the Patriarch noted in his encyclical for September 1st this year, the destruction of creation is an offense against the creator entirely irreconcilable with the basic tenets of Christian theology. Indeed, the patriarch continues, the very life of the church is an applied ecology. And so the ecumenical patriarchate has issued an encyclical in 1989, as it has done every year since then, calling for concerted prayer for the protection of God's creation. This call was heeded by all Orthodox churches in the early 1990s, while other Christian confessions, and the World Council of Churches, and the European Conference of European Churches followed suit by the beginning of the new millennium. In 2015, Pope Francis and Archbishop Welby inaugurated September 1st as a day of environmental prayer for their respective global communions. And today, the Lutheran World Federation leads the ecumenical family in closing this year's season of creation. Second, 25 years ago, the patriarch insisted on something else, that reconciliation implies recognizing our failures. 
And so the patriarch insisted on a revolutionary shift in emphasis on a subject so fundamental to theology, and at the same time, so objectionable to the average layperson when he offered an undiluted criticism of ecological destruction as sin. Pope Francis writes in Laudato Si, the patriarch challenged us to acknowledge our sins against creation. We heard this just now with the confession from Leviticus in our ecumenical service. You see, we tend to call this an ecological crisis, but the root of the problem lies in the paradigms that impel us to pursue a particular lifestyle. The crisis concerns the way we imagine and treat one another and our world, because the way we see or perceive the world is the way we will respect and respond to it. Wouldn't it be amazing if people could discern the connection between military war for conquest, the lifestyle of those who control the Earth's resources, and the ecological plight of our planet? Wouldn't it be amazing if people could see the immediate association between what we do here on Earth and what we aspire to in heaven? And third, reconciliation involves ecumenical commitment. I have come to believe that in our relationship with the earth, we are called to affirm our interconnectedness with the rest of the world. That's what I would call the ecumenical imperative of creation care, because this sense of interconnectedness reminds us that the earth unites us all before and beyond any doctrinal, political, racial, or other differences. We may or may not share religious principles or ethnic backgrounds or political convictions, but we do share an experience of the earth, the earth, that, the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the ground that we tread. By some mysterious connection, the earth reminds us of our interconnectedness. That's the power of ecumenical collaboration, which lies in beginning to open up over and above ourselves and our own, above and beyond our communities and our churches. And in this respect, creation care has a vital ecumenical dimension in bringing us, divided Christians, insulated believers, before a common task that we must inevitably face together. So what does reconciliation mean for us, for you, for me? In 2017, Pope Francis and Patriarch Bartholomew issued a joint encyclical, the first ever, in fact, between the two leaders for September 1st as the day of creation. And they emphasized the need to identify what is really important and what brings meaning to life. And for the human family, they said, to act in solidarity in order to halt the destruction of the environment and preserve the diversity of the earth. That's what reconciliation means for us. The Greek word for reconciliation, sin chorisis, signifies living together in the same place, sharing the same space. If we've learned something from the current pandemic, it is that the earth can recover when we restrain our actions of domination and destruction by simply bringing less harm on creation and on other people, the world can unleash unimaginable healing powers. So let this be the moment that we steer the earth toward restoration. Peace and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ to you all sisters and brothers around the globe at these different time zones. On behalf of the World Council of Churches and particularly on my own behalf, I'd like to express our gratitude to Reverend Dr. Shad and the entire ecumenical season of Creation Steering Committee. 
the theme of 2020, Jubilee for the Earth, is more than timely. And when we consider the situation of our countries, our people, our nations, we realize that we are dealing with a fundamental part of our spiritual heritage, our present commitment to restore relationships, and more important, to ensure intergenerational sustainable livelihoods. The World Council of Churches many years ago tried to address this same thing from justice, peace, and sustainable society. It did not go very far. And later on, modified that theme to be justice, peace, and integrity of creation. It was during that process that the ecumenical partners and movements began to engage also with the international financial institutions. And we all know, I'll be sharing that a little later. Thus, the theme of this year, Jubilee for the Earth, comes at a time when COVID-19 pandemic and the lack of preparedness of the world to come with this, what other people have called pandemic, has inevitably reminded us of humanity's broken relationships with creation and with each other. The pandemic has exposed and exacerbated many of the inequalities, inequities and injustices that are prevalent in most of our nations. But this pandemic also offers us, particularly as Christian communities, inspiration from our faith communities to chart the way forward, to bring healing and transformation, and to ensure that justice and dignity are brought to relationships we have with each other and with creation and environment. The concept and practice of Jubilee helps us to have insights into about five concepts, one which has already been reflected upon, that is rest. Rest today is not a very easy thing to have because many people are on a cut rest. Restoration, replenishment, reconciliation, restitution. The space during Jubilee that is provided and the time after every six years, the seventh year, is precisely to facilitate integrated and mutually dependent relationships based on production and consumption of goods as per need and not greed. A practice therefore that would concur with our Lord's prayer, give us today our daily food. It should enable relationships between the earth and the other creatures to have a sustainable living by resting and restoring the necessary properties and components of life. It is also supposed to provide space for community participation, individual participation in the various sectors of society. The bedrock therefore of life giving, vibrant and sustainable world is dependent on the quality of our relationships with each other and with the environment and the level of accountability we have to each other and creation. The ecological state of our planet, the socioeconomic situation of our communities, the well being of creation, the livelihoods and the dignity of people, and the mental and physical health and security of people, especially the most vulnerable food, sovereignty, and security that people enjoy, are all a continuum and does not belong to different silos. Brothers and sisters, this is the time again to come back and interrogate our economic paradigm. 
because this economic paradigm that believes in exploitation, that believes in no limits to anything, is what has rendered most of our communities voiceless, poor, excluded from the tables of decision making. Contrary to what our Lord Jesus asked, that in Luke chapter 4, 18 to 19, Jesus talks about setting the captives free. In this case, we have captives of a particular model of economy that is violating the very creation of God. We have also oppressed people who are referred to as the vulnerable, who are now under the yoke of these forces. The current economic practice, therefore, is not one that can ensure sustainable relationships, sustainable living. If we look at the way in which the land grabbers, the, those who extract resources today, you will notice if you look at South Sudan oil fields, anywhere, the ecological refugees and IDPs are now a phenomenon that the five charity acts in Matthew demands of us to pay attention to. Therefore, the jubilee for, therefore, jubilee for the earth should result in a new economic paradigm as stated in Leviticus. Most people will say it is not possible. It is not doable. We have too many people on earth and yet I would say it is possible because in the African adage, we say, I am because you are, and you are because I am. The earth is for you, the earth is also for me. We can only but survive together if we take each other as equal men, women, made in the image of our creator. Jubilee is about rejecting and exposing global and national forces that continue to steal, kill, and destroy all forms of life, thereby creating a web of injustices, oppression, and death. This economic system has no regard for any form of life except maximization of profit. A jubilee movement that this theme invites all Christians and all men and women of faith to join is one that advocates for life in fullness, as John 1010 10 implies. Our political systems and ways do require challenging from our leadership in the ecumenical movement and which we have constantly done, but more so today because of what we are facing uh, that is unprecedented. All these viruses that are really going to continue to emerge because we have not been able to address the biodiversity um, diminishing on a very fast rate. The book of Genesis talks about God creating, stopping and seeing, and saying, it is beautiful, it is good. Can we say that? No. When you look at a situation like the heart of Africa, the Democratic Republic of Congo, whose natural resources are acquired and utilized by a corrupt system that exploits, maims, pollutes with impunity. It is contrary to what the Nazareth Manifesto of Liberty is about. Deforestation and forest degradation continue to take place at an alarming rate, contributing significantly to the ongoing loss of diversity and increasing human vulnerability to emerging pandemics. Jubilee for the Earth is to respect and conserve forests. We protect both the diversity of creation and indigenous people who are guardians of creation. More significantly, we also protect ourselves from deadly new diseases. To conclude, brothers and sisters, this year 
the Lutheran World Federation's theme invites all of us, including men and women who are of goodwill, who would want to see our planet restored, reconciled in relationships, who would like to see communities that are happy to pass on a new generation that will have hope, sustainable life and relationships socially, politically would be possible if a new orientation and values of life for all creation are opposed to extracting, exploiting resources and greed as Nehemiah addresses the very scene of greed. Justice as Amos puts it in Amos 5.24 it's not only for the scales of human being, it is also in our relationship. It is my prayer that the Ecumenical Steering Group Committee on Creation will find methods of reaching out to many local Christians, communities who are struggling to survive and who would want to participate in ensuring that we bring about change. Indeed, since 2016, the committee has gained and made inroads and we cannot but thank them. At the same time, we need to know that the experiences, impact and lessons from COVID-19 pandemic demand that we mobilize ourselves as Christians, men and women of goodwill to come up with the robust methods and activities to mitigate the existing negative relationship with the earth. Change is possible, brothers and sisters. Let us commit ourselves to advocate and accompany one another as we journey to restore God's creation and the image of God in every living thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, as people of faith, we're called to sound a voice of hope during the season of creation, honoring the Jubilee for the Earth. Pope Francis, guided by Saint, the spirit of St. Francis, reminds us in his message for this Jubilee that this is a sacred time of grace in which we contemplate our lives nurture relationships with all of creation and rejoice by blessing the good that has been done. During this time, I have reflected deeply on what it means to be engaged in sacred time. I found that this is an opportunity to explore interconnectedness and the significance of actions. When our awareness is heightened, we assess carefully and determine viable actions. Sacred time is an occasion to focus reflective attention upon personal and communal conversion. We can see how our engagement is a sacred action and that what we do has a profound effect on our lives and on the lives of others. Our openness to this change enhances our ordinary way of being and loving one another in such a way of living keeps us open to the movement of the spirit in our lives and a receptiveness to the spirit in the lives of others. So when we attend to life experience in our hearts, we have an inward readiness to face what life presents. Even as we are on this journey, we know that the challenges we meet within ourselves, we find are in others. We are faced with an ecological spirituality that needs to be evident in our actions. Our lives embrace the reality of our situation in a way that invites others to consider how they could respond. The road ahead is an arduous path to holiness, one in which we can attend to the divine presence crying out for the earth and for the poor and where we are to determine what it is that we are to do. This is a path of sacred action, one that allows us to be deepened and changed as we reach out to others as sowers of hope for the planet 
It is our person that is the message. I invite you to see this path as one of appropriate sacred action, one that compassionately embraces those we serve and which is a strategic journey with integrity, which effectively counters the devastating factors fostering climate change. An event which helped focus this reflection was a recent prayer seminar, a webinar, developed for the Union of Religious Superiors of Women and also for men. It's for the campaign Sowing Hope for the Planet to celebrate the season of creation with the theme Jubilee for the Earth. We prayerfully visited eight of our constellations and affirm the sacred action taking place in these 24 countries, in Africa, West and South, the Pacific and South Asia, Brazil, Mexico, United States, and Rome. Entering into their reality, we listened to the cries of the earth and the poor. We witnessed efforts of carefully selecting and planting trees for reforestation, maintaining gardens of biodiversity, distributing food and medicine to those persons desperately in need, working with indigenous populations, collective demonstrations to confront factors for climate change, countering the exploitations of the Amazon, desertification and flooding, and watching the paths of migrants through these countries. We were shown the system patterns as many experiences were shared in different contexts. We honored how each constellation struggled to maintain the unique beauty of each area and responded compassionately as sowers of hope. These prayers were visually represented with unique PowerPoints. Our hearts were touched by both the beauty of the countries and the sadness of their needs. In this movement of prayer, something very powerful happened. We were deeply moved in our attentiveness to the situations of the countries, to the sister speaking. At the close of each reflection, webinar participants sent personal prayers and in gallery views, each constellation received their blessing. This was sacred action and inspirational to witness and to be a part of. We will continue to organize and strengthen the networking cap capabilities of the constellation and sowing hope for the planet as we honor their reality, learn from one another, provide prayerful support, offer our blessings and determine what it is uh, 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 for us to do in these situations. As we continue this journey and go forth as instruments of hope in the world, we will gain clarity about what we need to be together and to support one another's effort. And we continue these commit commitments as we celebrate more in the coming year, the anniversary of Laudato Si with featuring inspiring initiatives on the local, national and international levels. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shira. For the Lutheran Communion, the ecumenical season of creation is an opportunity to affirm our long-standing commitment to address a central crisis of our time, climate change. The LWF affirms the global ecological crisis, including climate change, is human-induced. It is a spiritual matter. As people of faith, we are called to live in right relationship with creation and not exhaust it. We strive to care for creation and to amplify the cry of the earth and the vulnerable. The liturgical season of prayer and action is one way that our member churches become more theologically grounded in the teaching on human dignity our identity as creatures, our relationship to the land and the true value of creation. This year, we invited churches worldwide to join this ecumenical season of creation. And it has been a joy to see congregations use the liturgies, 
share news about their own local initiatives on social media, and particularly to see our youth continue to lead our efforts to care for creation and advocate for climate justice. I rejoiced while visiting our humanitarian work in the Republic of Chad a time ago to see water pumps operated by solar energy. Last year, while visiting our member church in Tanzania, I saw its presiding bishop make it a condition whenever he visits a parish to plant trees with youth at the end of the visit. Overall, I continue to be inspired to see youth in the LWF leading us. They are leading us today. They are teaching us today. And this is good for all of us. This year's theme, Jubilee for the Earth, invited us to consider the integral relationship between rest for the earth and our economic, social, and political ways of living. As we engaged with the theme during this particular year, the need for just and sustainable systems has been revealed by the far-reaching effects of the global COVID-19 pandemic. The path of the virus unmasked the manifold ways that our lives are connected. But it points to the wisdom at the heart of our Christian faith that all creation is connected, which is a source of redemptive and restorative hope. It is the wisdom that humans are creatures. creatures. Our liberation lies in a return to our identity as members of the earth community. Freedom that doesn't remember we are mutually bound together only leaves us captive to ourselves. This isolation makes us less than human and destroys the ecology in which we become our true selves. Created from the earth, like all our core creatures, we bear the image of God and a vocation to till and keep God's garden for this and future generations. It is the wisdom that all of our ways of relating to each other economically, politically, biologically, and socially are all bound to the limits of this earth. Part of our baptismal vocation is to sustain this ecology of relationships in ways that are just. Divine justice honors the earth and each creature, not for utility or economic value, but for the beauty of their diversity and inherent dignity. The text from Leviticus points to the wisdom of Sabbath. The law was given to God's people in the wilderness. They were wandering in the desert, strangers in a strange land, without the familiar markers of their old life. God was calling them to do a new thing. They were free, but the next step to liberation was to imagine how to live in a new way. The Sabbath, including the Jubilee, gave them moral imagination to live as God intended, to restore the ecological web of right relationships to one another, the earth and all her creatures. This is the Jubilee to which we are called today. Together, we strive for the holy imagination and the courage to live anew as God intended to be freed from the economic and social yoke of vicious production and consumption that causes ecological destruction and the gender, racial, and intergenerational injustices of climate change. Freed to embrace our ecological identity, freed to reform unjust structures, freed to create economic and political systems that lift the burden we place on our core creatures and on the earth herself. 
street to proclaim a jubilee for the earth. And what better way to proclaim this holistic jubilee than together as one Christian family, knit together by baptism in the body of Christ, in whom all things in heaven and earth were created, and in whom all things hold together. As we read, for in Christ, the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through Christ, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. We belong to the creator in whose image we are all made. In God, we are breathing. In God, we are living. In God, we share the life of all creation. We belong to Jesus Christ, the true icon of God and of humanity. In him, God is breathing. In him, God is living. Through him, we are reconciled. We belong to the Holy Spirit who gives us new life and strengthens our faith. In the spirit, love is breathing. In the spirit, truth is living. The breath of God always moves us. We belong to the Holy Trinity, who is one in all and three in one. In God, we are all we are made. made. In, in Christ, Christ, we are all saved. All saved. In this we are all, we are all united. Let us pray. We pray in thanksgiving for Mother Earth, in one all life is rooted. Brother Sun, was energy radiates life. Sister Water, who nurtures and revives us, and co-creatures with whom we live, and for whom we are called to till and keep this garden. Enlighten our hearts and remain with your world. All-powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour our, out upon us the power of your love that may, we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one, creative spirit. Enlighten our hearts and remain and with, the world. with your world. O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your, son, in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it. That we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Creative spirit. Enlighten and our, in our hearts and remain, and remain with our word. word. <clears throat> Teach us to discover the worlds of each thing, to be filled with awe and with contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light, creative spirit. Enlighten our hearts and remain with your world. In the wake of COVID-19, the global pandemic, 
hear our cries of compassion and heal our own world and all creatures. Inspire our hearts with a holy imagination to rise freed from the demands to produce and consume, to imagine a just sustainable way of living where all have enough and all may be restored. Creative spirit. Enlighten our hearts and remain with your world. Inspire by this season of creation, grant us courage to observe a Shabbat for our planet. Strengthen us Teach us to be satisfied within us. And as we proclaim a jubilee for the earth, send your only spirit to renew the face of the ground, creative spirit. Enlighten our hearts and remain, remain with, your, with your word. And friends, now we offer some of the prayers that are come to us from those who were gathered online from around the world who have been shared in this chat box. And with Sandra, we ask for God and divine mercy to help us be instruments of hope to our children and to our youth. With Luke, we pray for victims of racism and violence all over the world. May the triune God heal the wounds of the oppressed, change the hearts of the oppressors. We pray for love and peace to all creation and to deliver us from our equal, ecological sins and spiritual recession. With Kaganga, we pray for our youth who are leading us in spiritual and environmental justice. With Sum Sumina, we give thanks to God for the gift of our creation and pray that our eyes of our hearts will be open to continue to see God at work in them. With Marta, we pray, God, deepen our awareness of your presence in all of creation so that we may live in love, harmony, and reverence for the gifts of life on earth. With Carlos Jesus Delgado, we pray, Lord, help us to change our lifestyle, to take care of our common home. With Andro, we pray, Baba, Abba, thanks for your great love and forgiveness. May we become merciful as you are merciful to all that you created, whether we meet them every day or have no idea and are never able to see them. With Patrick, we pray that we are not blind to the beams in our own eyes when it comes to the abuse of creation. With Jeanette, we pray, nous te supplions Dieu de nous pardonner nos actes meurtriers contre la création et nous donne une bonne conscience d'aimer la création comme nous nous aimons nous-mêmes. And with Elmore, we pray that we may always cultivate our interiority so that we can become conscious that we are interconnected with our creator, with others, nature, and ourselves to take radical appropriate responses to the urgent call of our time. Lord, for these and all other prayers that are offered here in our blessed gathering, we ask for you to receive them to your heart as we pray, creative spirit, enlighten our hearts. And remain with your world. 
We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for just, sustainable relationships rooted in your love and peace. We pray in the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Amen. And friends, we invite you now to pray together in the way that our Lord taught us in each of us now in the language of our hearts. Notre Père, qui es au ciel, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour. Pardonne-nous nos offenses comme nous pardonnons aussi à ceux qui nous ont offensés. Et ne nous mets pas à la tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal, car c'est à toi que bâtit une reine la puissance et la gloire, au siècle des siècles. Amen. Let us receive the benediction from the Lord. May God who established the dance of creation, who marveled at the lilies of the field, who transforms cows to order, let lead us to transform our lives and the church to reflect God's glory in creation. Amen. And friends, Sisters and brothers in Christ, on behalf of the Ecumenical Season of Creation Steering Committee, we thank you for participating from around the world in this prayer to close this season of creation. We've reflected throughout these past weeks that this year's season of creation has had a special kind of momentum and holy energy, perhaps related to the way that the COVID pandemic has unmasked the integral nature of our economic and political and ecological aspects of the Earth community. But most certainly because this theme, Jubilee for the Earth, has inspired millions of members of our communions and organizations represented by you who led our prayer today. And so now we'd like to extend a word of gratitude to Monsignor Bruno Dufay from the Vatican Dicastery for promoting integral human development, Sister Sheila Kinsey, from the International Union of Superiors General. Bishop Griselda Delgado de Carpio from Cuba via video for her prayer. Reverend Jeanette Adamaina, the Vice President of the Lutheran World Federation. Bishop F. Tendero representing the World Evangelical Alliance. Reverend Nalia Kassab, the President of the World Communion of Reformed Churches. Reverend Christian Krieger, Keck President Father John Krisavgis, representing His All Holiness, Patriarch Bartholomew I. Dr. Agnes Abuam, moderator of the World Council of Churches, and Reverend Dr. Martin Junga, the General Secretary of the Lutheran World Federation. And to all of you across the whole Christian family, particularly our youth who have engaged in webinars and joint ecumenical action, prayers, and symbolic acts around the world. We pray that this ecumenical solidarity sustains this expression of our visible unity in the months to come until we open together the season of creation 2021. Mm -hmm. And as we prayed today, may we be inspired by this season of creation with the courage to observe a Sabbath for our planet, faith to trust in God's providence, the creativity to share what we have been given as we proclaim a jubilee for the earth. And so now, friends, we go in peace to till and keep God's garden. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Jerusalem, I 
Y cae a la mente Y no lo sé 